Well, hello, 1P, and welcome to our further discussion on relationships. Uh, we're going to be talking about graphing linear relations today. Uh, our goal, I can collect data and determine if it represents a linear or nonlinear relationship. So we're going to talk about linear relationship today. Um, and whenever you graph information and the graph turns out to be a straight line, uh, we say that there is a linear relation. If the points are in a perfect straight line, it is mathematically linear relationship. If they just sort of roughly form a straight line, like some of the scatter plots we've been working on for the last few days, it's still a linear relationship, but it's not mathematically linear because it's not a perfect mathematical relationship. Um, it can be modeled by mathematical relationship, but it itself is not perfectly linear. So we're going to start with example one. Create a table of values comparing the frame number to the number of tiles in the frame. Graph the data and see if you can find a relationship in the data. So here's, I've started this off, we got frame 1, frame 2, frame 3, and we have to figure out how many um, tiles are in the frame. Uh, so this one's actually pretty straightforward to start off with. Uh, we're going to create a table of values. So in frame number 1, there is one tile. In frame number two, there is uh, the one tile in the center from frame number one, and then we added one, two, three, four more. So there's five tiles. And then if you take a look, frame number three is actually frame number two. If I color this in, those are the tiles from frame number two, and then I'm adding one, two, three, four more tiles. So there's nine. Um, so, how would I get frame number four then? Well, frame number four would have frame number three, would have all of these things in frame number three, and then we would add the four tiles on the end. So, it would have the nine tiles from frame three and then four more, which is 13. Now, hopefully we could, you can see how we could carry on this pattern. As we increase each frame number by one, Okay. Every time we move up a frame number, our number of tiles increases by four because I'm adding those four onto the end. So now let's graph that and see if this forms some kind of linear pattern. Um, I need to go from one to four and maybe a few more on the side. I need to go from one to four. So I'm going to start at zero here and let's make each two spaces be one. So that this is one, two, three, four. Now that's all I really need, but I might as well do five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now up the side I need to get to thirteen, but I've since I've left all of this space here, I maybe want to see a pattern and try to carry on the pattern. So I'm going to try and leave a bunch of space up here so that I can extend my pattern beyond what I've got here. So I don't want to stretch 13 out all the way up here. Um, so maybe let's go up by twos. If I let that be two, four, six, eight, ten, there's ten and that leaves me lots of room there. So two, four, six, eight, ten, two, four, six, eight, twenty, two, four, six, eight, 30 and 2, 4, 6, 8, 40. So I've got 40 up the side. Now along the bottom, this is our frame number. And along the side is our number of tiles. Now I know I had to put the frame number on the bottom because the frame number is what's set. I pick a frame number and then I count the number of tiles that are in it. So remember, whatever is set for sure goes along the bottom and then whatever you count or you measure uh, or you determine later is what goes up the side. So the number of tiles depends on which frame it's in. So let's graph this. I'm going to take, I'm going to do red dots here. So we need 1, 1. Well, that's 2. So 1, 1 would be right here. And 2, 5, well, would be right here, right in the middle, because that's 
2, 4, 6. So I've got to go right in the middle of 4 and 6. Uh, 3 is 9, which is going to be right here. 4 is 13. And so that's going to be, there's 12, so here's 13. And that's all I've got here, but I, I can continue on that pattern if I want to. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is put a line on here and I'm going to use a ruler because you really should use a ruler for these things. Um, I'm going to use a ruler and I'm going to put a dotted line along here. Now here's the reason I'm going to put a dotted line and why you should use a dotted line for a situation that looks like this too. We use a dotted line because there are no frames. We can't have a frame one and a half. That doesn't make sense in this situation. But I want to be able to carry on my pattern. So there's some information in there that I need to carry on my pattern, but since since the information in between the points is kind of useless to me, um, I'm not going to actually put a solid line. There has to be reasonable information in between and there's no reasonable information in between these things because I can't have half a frame. So now let's see if we can find a, find a relationship here. Uh, this says describe the trend. So describe the trend, say every time the frame increases we add more tiles. So both values are increasing. Now this says, can you find a way to determine the number of tiles just by knowing the frame number? Uh, so we want to actually get a formula so that if I ask you um, what is the 500, if there's 500 frames, how many are going to be in here? So we have to actually do some figuring out here and it's probably going to involve this number 4 and it's going to have to involve a frame number. So let's have a look for frame number 1. Uh, what is 4 times frame number 1? Just trying to involve these kind of things. So 4 times frame number 1 uh, gives us 4. And what we actually have is 1 tile. So I got to do something to 4 to get to 1. And I don't know what that is yet. So let's take a look at frame number 2. I, I want to use this 4 because it's going up by 4 every time. Um, and, for, and tile 2. So I'm, I'm going to take a look 4 times 2 and that gives me 8 and what I really have in frame number 2 is 5. So I have to figure out what to do to 8 to get to 5. And I don't know what that is yet but I need the same rule for each frame number. So whatever I do to 4 to get to 1 has to be the same thing that I do to 8 to get to 5. Uh, let's try the next one. Um, 4 times the third frame would give me 12, but I have to do something to 12 because there's actually 9 there. Does anybody, do you think, you see that pattern? What do I have to do to 4 to get to 1? Um, well, I could subtract 3. 4 subtract 3 would give me 1. Um, is that the same thing that I have to do here? What about 8? Can I subtract 3? 8 subtract 3? That's, that actually, that gives me 5. How about 12? 12 subtract 3. Yep, that gives me 9. 12 subtract 3 is 9. So it looks like I have that, I've, if the frame number, I have to take the frame number, frame number, and times that by 4 which is the amount that we were going up by, and then subtract 3, that gives me the number of tiles. So we take the, here's the rule, can you determine a way by knowing? We take 4 times the frame number,
and subtract 3. So let's say for frame uh, 60. Definitely don't want to have to keep adding. I don't want to carry on this chart all the way to 60. Uh, so I'm going to use this formula. This formula says I'd only have to take 4 times the frame number, which I said is frame 60, and then subtract 3. Well, 4 times 60 is 240, and then I subtract 3, which is going to give me 237. So in frame 60, there's 237, and I don't have to carry that all out. So let's take a look at a different relationship here. How are the non-right angles in a right triangle related? Well, let's have a look. <clears throat> um, what, what do we know about the angles in a triangle? We know that this represents 90 degrees. And hopefully you remember from elementary school that all the angles in a triangle have to add up to 180. So if all the angles in a triangle have to add up to 180, let's actually figure these out. Um, so if I let this one be 10, then 90 and 10 is 100. So that means that this one over here is going to have to be 80 to add up to 180. So if I get 10, I need 80. Uh, what about 20? Well, let's take a look. Uh, that's 90 in there, so if I add 20 in here, between 90 and 20 is 110, and I need to get to 180, so this in here is 70. So I've got 70 there. Let's do this one more time, and then we'll maybe examine a pattern here. Okay? Uh, if x down here is 30, like it says in the table, if x is 30, then 90 plus 30 is 120. And I know I need to get to 180, so I need another 60 up here, so this is 60. Do you see where this is going? Every time x goes up by 10, y comes down. And by down, I mean negative. y comes down by 10. So this is going to be 50, 40, 30, 20, 10 all in degrees, of course. So we go down by 10 every time. Uh, so what's the relationship between these two things? Well, uh, how, did I figure, how did I figure this one out? Well, what is the relationship between these two numbers? They're always adding to 90 degrees. So if I know 1, if say I know x, then to figure out y, I just have to do 90 minus x. So y is going to equal 90 minus x. That's how I figured all of these things out. I just had to, those two things have to add up to 90 degrees. So let's take a look. What does this pull tab say? This says, you should notice a pattern in the table after figuring out a few numbers, and we did. As long as I've chosen my x values to go up at a constant rate, which I did, then the y values will too. That happens in all linear relationships. Linear relations have a constant rate of change. Constant rate of change. If you don't set or pick x values that have a constant rate of change, then you won't see the pattern. So you need to make your x's, because you're picking your x values, you need to pick x values that go up at a constant amount, and then you'll eventually see that the y's are doing going up or down by a constant amount too. So let's graph this relation. Now, what does this say? When you graph a relation, here you're going to ask yourself these three things. The first one you're going to ask yourself is, is it appropriate to draw a line through the points, i.e. is all the information between the points valid? So let's have a look at what we've got here. I need to go from 0 to 90 because I can't have, in a 90 degree triangle, I can't have anything bigger than that. So I'm going to go um, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and then up the sides the same, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 
and 90. So let's graph these. Um, Ta-da! There, I graphed them. Now, is it appropriate to draw a line through the points? Is there valid information? So what are we talking about here? We're talking about degrees. Is it possible to have something that has, say, a 65 degree angle in a triangle? And yeah, a triangle can have a 65 degree angle. It can have a 65 and a half degree angle. So it is valid. I need to draw, draw a line through these points because there is information between them. So I can draw a line through those points. And notice I used a ruler. Okay, that's awfully straight. I didn't just swipe at it. I used a ruler. Okay, what's the next pull thing say? It says, goes really slow. Should we extend the line, make it go on forever, or is it a line segment? Well, can I extend the line down into the negatives? No, you can't have negative angles in a triangle. But I can have an 85 degree, so I could extend it past that. I can have an 85 degree angle. That's not a problem. Can I have another 90 degree angle? Mm, no, you can't have two 90 degree angles in a triangle. If you have two 90 degree angles in a triangle, then it looks like this. That's got three sides and two 90 degree angles and we've got this open top on it. You can't have two 90 degree angles in a triangle. Um, but you can have right up to up to 90, you just end up with a really long, skinny triangle if you do that. Um, but you can't have 90. So that's the subject of our next pull tab. It says, what are the ends? Are they meaningful? Well, we can have right up to 90, but we can't have 90 exactly. So 90 is not meaningful. So what I have to do is put an open circle at the two 90s because I cannot have 90. I can get up to 89.9 and have a long skinny circle, but I can't have 90. So I'm just going to extend this to the 90. And the open circles there mean that the endpoints don't make any real sense. Um, they're not part of it, but I'm going to put the endpoints there because I can go right up to them. All right, what kind of questions are they asking here? Using words, write a rule that shows what you need to do with x to get to y. Okay, we already talked about that. We say um, that y is uh, 90 minus x. Okay, now if I write that in math symbols, it will be y is would be an equal sign and then 90 minus x. So if the bottom angle x in a right triangle were 35, what is the top angle? Which the top angle will be uh, the y. Use both your graph and your math equation. So 35, let's go back to the graph. Graph is over here. So I want if the bottom angle is 35. 35 is here, I'm going to follow this up and this is what I want. So then I follow it over and that looks like 55. So I think my answer is 55. Let's use the math equation I got. This says 90 minus x. So if I want to know what y is, I have to take 90 and subtract 35. 90 take away 35 is 55. Same as I got on the graph. And that concludes this video lesson.